So I've been playing around with this program called J Wildfire. And while I do love it, you can get some really cool uh, fractal patterns and animations. I've got to say, it's not the most intuitive program to work in. So I thought I'd do a quick video just explaining how to utilize your GPU when rendering an animation, just cause it took me a while to work out and I just thought it might be able to save some headaches. And so we'll just hit play. So we've got this animation here. And let's say we want to render it out. Now, there are multiple ways you can render out the animation. You can just click here, render image and movie. So you can just use this, but the problem with this one is it will only render out a still frame. Uh, so if you render this, it's just going to render out a still frame, but you can render it straight to a movie just by naming it and saying, um, I don't know, file.mp4. So if you do that, it will render it and then encode it to MP4 after rendering. Uh, but as far as I'm aware, if you do that, it doesn't actually utilize your GPU if you have it available. The best way I've found to do it is to actually go to Windows over here and do Batch Renderer. So if you use this window here, this actually lets you render using your GPU. The only issue is it's not very clear how to use this. So I'll just go through it first. What you actually need to do is you need to save your flame first. So once you've created your design and your animation, you wanna go over here to save flame and just save it somewhere you can find it. I recommend setting up a folder in one of your root directories. So like set up like a J wildfire folder, just because for some reason it always defaults to this document folder when you open it. So you don't wanna have it like somewhere deep in the file structure of where it's gonna be. This window is not really that great to navigate in. So you wanna have it just so you can easily access it. Yeah, save your flame. So I'll just save this one test. Uh, we'll call it tutorial. And you just wanna save your flame. So this is like saving the project essentially. So you're saving this sort of project file. That's what saving the flame does. But what you can do now, when you go open up the batch renderer, you just go add files and just navigate to wherever you saved it. So we'll find that file that we just saved, tutorial flame. You just wanna open this. And now you're gonna see here, you can actually add multiple files if you want. So you can add, like if you had a bunch of flame animations, you could add a bunch of them and then you can batch render it. If you just leave it as default, it's only gonna render one frame again. So if you wanna render the animation, you actually need to go over here to where it says render animation and just set that to one. That's essentially telling it to render all the frames in the sequence. So with that done, I would just set your resolution to something that you want. So I'm gonna go for like a 2K resolution and you can set this to however you want. I think high quality is fine. I would uncheck this. For some reason it automatically disables the denoiser. I don't know why you'd want that. You probably wanna have the denoising activated. So I would uncheck that, but make sure GPU is checked. And now if you hit render, it's gonna render all of your uh, frames and you can see the, the progress bar here. So it's just gonna take some time to do that. But one thing to note is it automatically renders these files where your flame file is. So if you just open up your file explorer and we'll go to the J wildfire and you can see now it's rendering out all of these and it renders them out in image sequences. But there's one thing to note it will automatically convert these image sequences into an MP4 file. Now that might be handy if you want that, that's cool. But for me personally, I like to have my stuff in image sequences. I like to put them into After Effects and things like that, and I don't want the file to be compressed. So unfortunately, the only way I've worked out how to stop it from automatically converting it is to just stop the rendering process once you get to the last frame. So as you can see, I've got 600 frames in this sequence. So we've still got quite a while to go. But basically once it gets to about 90%, roughly the last 20 to 10% is gonna be um, of the job progress is gonna be the, um, the file encoding into an MP4. Once it does that, like I said, it will delete all of the images and then just give you one video file. So if you do wanna keep your stuff as an image sequence, you're just gonna have to unfortunately keep an eye on the job progress and then just stop the job once you get to roughly 90%. It's not, it's obviously not the best solution if you are gonna batch a bunch of them. I, I don't know how to do it without it automatically converting to an MP4, but yeah, at least this method lets you utilize your GPU though, because if you did this without a GPU, it's gonna take a lot longer. 
you're obviously spending a lot of money on your GPU, so you want to be able to use it, you know. So yeah. One thing to note as well is not all flames can actually be rendered on a GPU. So sometimes you might not have luck. So for example, if you go over to the scripts here, you can get some pre-made scripts which will generate some fractal flames for you. And if, say you go for one of these like galaxy ones, just hit run that script and it will automatically create like a galaxy scene. You'll notice you actually cannot render this with a GPU. So you'll see here flames in multiple layers are currently not supported on GPU. So for these, you'll have to render these with your CPU, I'm afraid. Another thing I've noticed as well is because I think there are some limitations with GPU rendering on this program, uh, some of your flames may look a bit different when you render them on GPU, like colors may be changing and stuff like that. and may not look exactly how they do in the viewport. That's just one thing I've noticed as well, but it does save you a lot of time with the rendering. So as you can see here, I'm getting about, I'm getting roughly a frame every two seconds really. So yeah, you do want to use your GPU where you can. So yeah, you'll see now if you just navigate to the folder, like I said before, that's the folder where you saved your flame. Uh, it automatically puts the renders there if you use the batch renderer. So if you just navigate there, go to go to details and then just sort by date. And you'll see the most recent one. In my case, it's frame 5999 because I've got 600 frames in my sequence. That would suggest that the render is done now. So around, around 87%. Um, so I'm just going to hit stop now. And hit and stop just allows me to keep everything in an image sequence. And I'll just create a new folder now. And I'm just gonna move all of these files into that folder. And now I have my render completely uncompressed. So, and there'll be an MP4 file in there as well, but that because we canceled the render, uh, it's gonna be corrupted because it hasn't encoded. If you do want it to automatically convert, um, you can just leave it and let it let the batch renderer do its thing. It will automatically convert it. But like I said, I like to have my stuff uncompressed so I can always convert it to MP4 if I need to. And now if we open up a player, you can throw it into like After Effects or something. And now here you go. You've got your animation. So yeah, just a quick one. I hope that helped you guys. If it did, uh, leave a like and subscribe and all that. So, um, and yeah, feel free to check out more of my work and consider supporting me on Patreon if you find value in my content. You can check out more of my work at nebmotion.co.uk.